One of the lesser known messaging applications available to Android users is something called Briar, and this is nothing like you've likely ever used before. Today, we're going to cover this project, what it's like to use, who it's for, and just a general review of the service. Let's start with covering its privacy and security. Briar is open source, found on only the Google Play Store or preferably the open source F-Droid store that you can get for any Android device. It's not for iOS, unfortunately. Briar relies on peer-to-peer -peer encrypted messaging, meaning there's no central server. This also means that there's no server storing your messages. These are only stored on your device or the devices of contacts who received the message. This is already beyond the typical privacy and security precautions taken by many messengers which rely on centralized models. But Briar doesn't stop there. You don't even need the internet to use it, so even during a time of crisis, you can still maintain access through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Lastly, Briar tunnels everything through Tor, and it's all end-to-end -end encrypted by default. There's no personal information whatsoever required to start using Briar, you just pick a random username and password, and that's that. If you forget it, your messages are unobtainable, and your account is only accessible on that one device. So to recap, in comparison to things like WhatsApp and Signal, you don't have to put any trust into a central entity. Everything is open source and peer-to-peer. -peer. Briar's decentralized model prevents content filtering, takedown orders, DDoS attacks, and metadata surveillance. And the only person you have to trust is the person you're talking to, at least in theory. There aren't many cons in the privacy and security field when it comes to Briar. It kind of is one of the main standards that we can use for messaging. When you first open the app, you pick a username and password. As for adding a contact remotely, which is what most of you would likely do, you share your link with your contact and they share their link with you. Once you both add each other's links, you're good to start communicating. Since it is peer-to-peer, -peer, your messages will not be sent to the other individual if they are offline. If you leave Briar running all day in the background, which is more or less the default, it'll constantly try to send the message and wait for your contact to go online, otherwise the message will simply never send. So the best thing to do is have both contacts leave Briar online in the background if you want that normal instant communication you're used to. Outside of direct messages, Briar also supports groups and forums. Groups function as you'd expect with multiple contacts. Forums are kind of like an IRC chat. These are public rooms which anyone can share with anyone and you can communicate with others like a community. Lastly, there are blogs and this is a mix of almost like Twitter and blogging, so anything you post will be public to your contacts here, and it's a way to mass announce things, which other people can essentially retweet. It's kind of like its own social network. Okay, great. Everything we've talked about is mostly surface level, but let's talk about actually using Briar. My editor and I moved over to communicating on Briar for about a day, so we got to experience it a little bit to give our thoughts. First, it's simple, and this is good and bad, and we'll talk about that more later. In short, you can only send messages and emojis. That's it. No photos, no videos, no calls, and no stickers or any other fancy things that you find in other messengers. Second, the app runs in the background constantly if you want real-time communication, and this will have an effect on battery life. The degree of which will depend on your device and your configuration, but there will be undoubtedly some kind of hit. Third, the app itself has a pretty bland interface and it feels oddly impersonal when you're chatting with someone. It's just hard to make it feel personal when it's such a simple experience. And this in itself makes it feel like you are, quote, chatting anonymously. Despite its simplicity, you'll still find some bells and whistles like dark mode, tour settings, options to use panic buttons in the event of an emergency, an app lock, and more. You can, by the way, disable the online notification so it's not pinned on your phone all day. Lastly, they do have a desktop client in alpha, so I guess keep an eye on that to see where things advance. If I were to recap the whole user experience for Briar, I'd say it falls on a very, very fine line between simple and bland, which is fine. We're being critics here, but we are reviewing the service, so that's those are our thoughts. <laughs> which I guess leads to my final thoughts. When I first tried Briar, I didn't really get it, both literally because it does have a bit of a learning curve, but figuratively as well, like who would use this? 
It clicked for me when I tested out its blog functionality, which just screams journalism and activism. If you're a journalist or activist looking to safely communicate with others and spread information to them without trusting a central entity through a medium that requires no information and a near impossible ability to delete information in an unauthorized fashion, this is perfect. <laughs> You can have groups, you can send updates on your own well-being, as well as your findings in the blog, and you can have forums where people can join your conversation. Little things like the panic button are also valuable tools for people at risk of being imprisoned or forced to unlock their devices. However, for a mainstream messenger to use with your friends, I personally don't find it a good experience for that, but I also don't think that's really what it's made for. There's no cross-device accounts, there's no ability to even recover an account if you forget your password, it doesn't really have any functionality you'll find in apps like Signal. I don't really see Briar as a competitor to most mainstream messengers like Signal and Telegram. I could compare using Briar versus Signal to something like Tor versus a VPN. They have different use cases built on different centralized versus decentralized models, and each has its own pros and cons. Briar does a great job at what it's supposed to do, and that might not be your use case, but it sure as hell is someone else's, and we really respect the work that's being done with the project. If you enjoyed this video, we covered our top five favorite apps from Ftroid in another video, and we also have a full guide from start to finish taking you through privacy and security on Android and how to make it as strong as you need it to be. Remember, Briar can be as secure as possible, but if the endpoint security on your device is weak, most of that security can go down the drain. So ensure you're keeping up with how to protect yourself and the device on all fronts. Thanks for watching everyone and have a great rest of your day.